Chen Zhao sat down with Ying Hejun, Chinese Minister of Science and Technology. Ying spoke about the significance and highlights of cooperation between China and France. Well, thank you, Minister, for accepting our interview today. Uh, this year holds great significance for China and France. And looking at science and technology cooperation, we can go back to 1978, when both nations signed a government-to-government -government agreement on technological cooperation. So this marks the first official collaboration between China and a Western power in the field of science and technology. So over the past 40 years, what standout achievements and highlights have emerged from cooperation between these two countries. 60年来, 中法关系, 始终走在中国同西方国家, for the past 60 years, China-France relationship has consistently been at the forefront of China's relations with Western countries. The technological cooperation between the two countries has provided China with many valuable insights and experiences that can be drawn upon for its technological innovation and development. For example, in 1991, both countries launched Sino-French Advanced Research Program, or PRA. This was the first joint research funding mechanism established between China and a foreign country. In 1997, China and France established the Joint Laboratory for Information, Automation and Applied Mathematics. This is the first laboratory built between China and a foreign country. Liama pioneered the platform-based approach for conducting international cooperation. The results of Sino-French technological cooperation are groundbreaking and forward-looking. For example, the China-France oceanography satellite achieved the first ever synchronous observation of waves and sea surfaces globally. Joint soil research guide solutions for agricultural soil pollution. In low temperatures, metrology, we created the world's most precise temperature measuring device from 5 to 24.5 Kelvin. We are driving forward the Jingmen Neutrino experiment, laying the foundation for the world's largest liquid scintillator detector with the highest energy resolution. Researchers successfully cloned a mouse from somatic cells and collaborate deeply in treating pediatric acute promyglectic leukemia, achieving over 90% five-year disease-free survival rate. These are just a few examples. I want to express gratitude for the enduring close cooperation between China and France's scientific communities. And what do you think has been the main reason behind the steady development of Sino-French technological cooperation? And what factors attract the two countries to cooperate with each other? Firstly, both China and France are major players in global innovation and addressing global challenges. They share the belief in science without borders, advocating for open, fair and non-discriminatory international scientific cooperation. Secondly, our policies have a significant impact. China supports technological innovation and industrial development through five major science and technology plans, while France drives economic growth through initiatives like the France 2030 Investment Plan. They have similar goals and direction in science and technology. Thirdly, they have complementary strengths. France has a long-standing tradition of technological innovation, while China's innovation capabilities are growing steadily. Both countries rank highly in the Global Innovation Index published by the World Intellectual Property Organization, showing comparable strength. Fourthly, there is strong people-to-people -people connectivity. In 2017, we launched the Sino-French Outstanding Young Scientists Exchange Program. In 2023, President Xi Jinping and Macron witnessed the establishment of the Sino-French Research Partner Exchange Program. Within the shared research interests of both parties, as you just mentioned, many are global challenges. As significant international powers, what collaborations are China and France undertaking, and what considerations are there for the future? China and France are both responsible and committed powers willing to contribute to world peace and development. 
Combating climate change has always been a key issue in the Sino-French high-level strategic dialogue. Under the framework of the Paris Agreement, China and France have been actively promoting the realization of carbon neutrality. The two countries jointly participate in the Global Climate Change Assessment under the United Nations IPCC. In April 2023, the two countries signed the agreement to establish the first carbon neutrality center focusing on agriculture, biodiversity and the environment and will co-organize the first annual meeting of their center this year. On March 19th this year, I met with Sylvie Eretayo, the French Minister of Higher Education and Research in Paris, for the 15th session of the Joint Commission for Key Scientific and Technological Cooperation, where we jointly identified four priority areas for the next session, including climate change, carbon neutrality and the aging population. The current international situation poses huge challenges to technological cooperation between East and West. And China and France have established over 40 years of solid foundation. How can we maintain this momentum and promote higher quality cooperation in this field amid these new circumstances? Firstly, under President Xi Jinping, diplomatic leadership, the frequency and significance of technological cooperation have significantly increased. Exchanges between Chinese and French scientists, the establishment of Carbon Neutrality Center and Sino-French AI seminars have been repeatedly mentioned by President Xi and have become important pillars of diplomatic relations. Secondly, it is essential to strengthen top-level planning. The Sino-French Joint Committee on Science and Technology Cooperation is a crucial mechanism for implementing the bilateral government agreement on scientific and technological cooperation. Maintaining stable Sino-French scientific and technological cooperation is of great significance amid the constantly changing international situation. During the joint committee meeting held in Paris, I also visited institutions such as CNRS, meeting all the new friends from the scientific community. Overall, the attitude towards dialogue and cooperation has been very positive, but facing the new international situation, they may have some doubts and concerns. However, by addressing these issues clearly and confidently, any doubts can be dispelled. Confidence is more precious than gold, and with unwavering confidence, the foundation of cooperation remains stable. Finally, it is important to promote exchanges and cooperation among young researchers. Young people are the vital force driving continuous innovation in science and technology. Creating a conducive research environment for young researchers and supporting their growth is crucial. Well, thank you, Minister, for sharing with us your insight. Appreciate it.